Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I have a very big and a very cozy fall book haul. So this book haul is cozy for a number of reasons. One reason is that it is 1am when I'm filming this. So I'm drinking coffee to keep me awake while I film this. I'm going to regret it when I've finish filming and I want to go to bed but I, I need the energy right now. The second reason of course is that I'm drinking coffee. I don't normally do book hauls like this. This video will contain all of the books that I have acquired in the month of October, November and also the end of September. So there are a lot of books to talk about. I didn't post a book haul last month because I wasn't posting as many videos a week as I usually do so I didn't have time to fit one into my schedule. I should have done because I have a lot of books but I didn't. So now we are sat on the floor and wrapped in my Imposia hooded blanket, which is so, so cozy. And we're going to talk about the 31, I think, books. I think it's 31 that I acquired over the autumn fall period. Before I get started, I just wanted to say I hope you guys liked the thumbnail of this video. From what I've seen of it, it's, it's not my best. I could have done better. But in the process of creating that thumbnail, I knocked over the enormous stack of books into the cup of coffee, into my hand, filled it all over the floor, the books went into the coffee, and I splashed coffee on my brand new hooded blanket. So I'm not too happy about that, but those are the perils of filming at 1am. Speaking of hooded blankets, this is a hooded blanket from Emposia. It was sent to me to show to you guys. I am also happy to say that when you are watching this video, if you are watching this video around the time that it's posted, these blankets are now in stock. They will be available available from the, I think it's the 23rd of November up until the 2nd of December so they will all arrive in time for Christmas and I do have two discount codes to offer you guys. The first discount code I have is Becca1 and that will get you 10% off a blanket. However if you are thinking of buying one for yourself and one as a gift I do have a second discount code which is Becca2 and that will get you 25% off if you do order two blankets which is the equivalent of buy one get one half price. Honestly I would recommend it. These blankets are so thick they're like a suede out of Material with a fleecy inside we have oops a hood they also have a button so they fasten like a cloak and they come in a range of bookish designs I will put a link to the vlog where I unbox them up here if you want to see a little bit more of this design but I am hoping to get some photos on Instagram as well it's just a really big blanket and I'm not used to taking such large-scale photos so I'm struggling a little bit with that but yeah as I said I would recommend I am actually going to be purchasing at least one maybe two to gift to people over the Christmas period I absolutely love this blanket I'm living in it so so if it's something you may be interested in then I would definitely recommend checking Emposia out and I'll put the link down in my description box. So as for the book haul, as usual we will be splitting this down into sections. These sections I have for you this time are library books, books that I bought secondhand, books that I bought brand new, books I've been gifted and subscription box books. So as I said, 1am. I don't want to be up all night. I'm going shopping tomorrow. So let us crack on with this book haul. And I think we will start with the library books because those are the ones that I actually have the least of at the moment. So the first book I picked up from my library is Soundless by Rochelle Mead. I am, or I was, I don't know if I would be if I read them now, but I am a big fan of the Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead. Unpopular opinion, I actually prefer Bloodlines, which is the spin-off, which I know a lot of you guys don't like that series, but I'm trash for Adrian. So this is a book that I wanted to read back when it was released in, I think, was it 2015-ish? Yeah, 2015 but I never got around to picking it up. I don't know too much about this. I haven't seen many people read it on booktube, but it is a young adult fantasy that follows a girl who lives in a village where there is no sound. The second book that I picked up is I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. This is a sci-fi masterworks book and I have been interested in the sci-fi masterworks collection because I'm wanting to branch out into more fantasy and science fiction classics. I picked this one up from my library because I'm familiar with this story. So I thought this would be a good place to start with classic sci-fi. And this is obviously the book that the film I Am Legend is based on and in this book we follow the last man alive in an apocalyptic world who is struggling to hold on to his humanity and his hope. 
I really enjoyed this movie. I do know that the book is quite a bit different, but I just think it will be a good starting point for the sci-fi masterworks collection. I also picked up The Serpent King by Jeff Zetner. I don't know a whole lot about this, but the reason that I'm interested in it is that it is Julie from Pages and Pens. It's not, I don't know if it's her favorite book of all time, but when I think of Julie, if you ask me which one book I associated with her, it would be The Serpent King. This is a hard-hitting contemporary. I believe it's young adult. I don't read a lot of young adult contemporary as you guys know, but I am interested in a few of them, especially if they have a sci-fi twist or if they are particularly hard-hitting, which I believe this one is. Not sure if it has any science fiction or fantastical elements at all, but like I said, I don't know too much about the plot of this, aside from it follows a boy who hasn't had the best upbringing or the best start in life. And aside from that, I have no idea. And the last book I picked up from my library was The Disappearance at Devil's Rock by Paul Tremblay. Paul Tremblay is a horror author that I'm particularly interested in. I want to get more into horror, I don't really know where to start, but Paul Tremblay is a modern horror writer. He's written quite a few books that are quite popular, including I think his most recent release was Growing Things, which was a collection of short horror stories. When I picked this up at my library, I didn't know too much about it and I pretty much picked it up just because it's Paul Tremblay and I'm interested in him. But this does follow a woman whose 13 year old son goes missing in the woods at the local park and as she is trying to find him I'm assuming she comes across something sinister. I don't know what kind of horror this is whether it's like a thriller horror or a supernatural horror but hopefully I'll find out. So next up we will go through the books that I've bought secondhand this month. Over the last couple of months I have ordered a couple of things secondhand online and I have also been into just a couple of charity shops. But the first secondhand book I have is Sword of Destiny by Andrzej Sapkowski. So this is the second book in the Witcher series. It isn't the second novel, it is the second book in the reading order of the series and this is the second collection of short stories and the last book before the core series begins. The Witcher series is currently being adapted or it has been adapted into a Netflix show. I believe it will be on very soon actually and I'm very excited to watch that. But I started reading this series because I am familiar with the games. This is also Elliot Brooks's favourite series. I found out that they were books from her actually and then I picked up the first book from my library. But this is a series that follows Geralt who is a monster hunter and the collection of short stories that I've read and assumedly this one follows him as he is essentially complete in quests if we're going with like game language and he is just traveling around doing his job as a witcher or a monster hunter and vanquishing the monsters that he encounters. Now I believe that this collection of short stories it takes place just before the start of the series and this is also the collection I think where we meet Siri, who's a character that I really like. So I'm hoping I enjoy this one. I didn't love the first one but that's just because I don't love short stories but even if I don't like this one I will persevere until I've read at least a couple of books in the core series. I also picked up a book that I don't know too much about but that is Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. Now this is the first book in the Dragons of Pern series. It is also Anne McCaffrey's first published book although I do believe that it is the 16th book in the Pern series overall. Anne McCaffrey is one of those authors kind of like Robin Hobb who write series but they all link together into a wider story or they're all set in the same universe essentially. I believe there are two reading orders for this series. Anne McCaffrey Caffrey herself recommends that you read it in publication order which is what I intend to do but there is also a reading order where you read it almost chronologically because there are some books that arc over like a huge period of time but there is a reading order where you can kind of piece it together chronologically. Now I did pick this up because I found it in a charity shop and McCaffrey is an author that I've only very briefly heard of but this book was published in 1968 and McCaffrey is considered a classic fantasy author. As you can probably tell this book contains dragons and that is pretty much all I know about it. I don't think I have ever seen anybody on booktube reading Anne McCaffrey so if you have read any of her books then please let me know how they are because I've never seen anybody review them. They are highly rated on Goodreads though. I think the first book has like a 4.5-ish rating which is really good so I do have high hopes for this and I hope I enjoy it when I get around to this series. The last book I picked up from Charity Shops is Night of the Seven Kingdoms by George R. R. Martin. This is a collection of short stories I 
think. And this tells the tale of Dunk and Egg. Now, I believe if you have seen or read Game of Thrones, you will know who Aemon Targaryen is. I believe that Egg is Aegon Targaryen, and I think that is Aemon's brother. This is kind of a companion or a novella or a spin-off of the A Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin, which is, of course, a series of books that Game of Thrones is based on. I'm currently just about to start the second half of Dance with Dragons, and then I will only have this Fire and Blood and the Ice Dragon to read. So while I saw this secondhand, I thought I would pick it up, as it's short stories and also considerably shorter than the books in the A Song of Ice and Fire series. It shouldn't take me too long to read, and one of the things that I love the most about A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones as a show is the legend and the lore and how intricate everything is and how well thought out and how well everything fits together. So I'm excited to read this just to get a little bit more backstory of things that happened in the history of Westeros. I also have two secondhand books that I picked up online, both of them from eBay. The first one I have is an interesting one and I don't know anything about it, but it is Lord of the Fading Lands by C.L. Wilson. You guys probably know I love Sarah J Maas and for a while now I have been looking for a high fantasy romance series similar to what Sarah J Maas writes but probably more adult. Obviously I know there is a lot of urban fantasy romance and a lot of paranormal romance out there but I'm specifically looking for like high fantasy or epic fantasy type of romance but I'm I'm kind of being picky about it and I'm looking for books that have an equally good romance plot as a fantasy plot because I found with some of the urban fantasy and paranormal that I've read that the romance tends to be quite good but I don't really like the fantasy or I find flaws in the fantasy world and the fantasy aspects really don't work for me. As somebody who reads a lot of fantasy it the fantasy aspects of the books are important and if I don't think they're well done then I just won't like the book. This was on a list on Goodreads of the most popular fantasy romances and it was rated higher than Akatar, which immediately caught my interest. So plot wise I literally know nothing about this even from reading the synopsis I don't have a good grasp of what the plot is. I do think that there are some sort of like legendary big cats in here and they are integral to the survival of the characters or the race of characters in this and I know that it contains a soulmate plotline and that is all I know. Have high hopes for this. I think I'm going to really love it. I just need to find time to read it. And the last second hand book I picked up was also off eBay and that was The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. This is the collector's edition. When these books were first released in the UK they had these covers. The covers have now had a reprint and from the third book onwards this style of cover is now the collector's edition. I believe that they can only be ordered through Samantha Shannon's website and I was missing this one from my collection. I'm currently co-hosting Bonathon which is a read along for the entire Bone Season series and I wanted to get my hands on this now before the fourth book in the series is released and these become more expensive and harder to get my hands on. So the Bone Season is a dystopian science fiction fantasy paranormal kind of book. It spans a whole range of genres but we follow our main character Paige Mahoney in a dystopian London where it is illegal to be a clairvoyant. As you can imagine our main character Paige is a clairvoyant and quite a powerful one and one day when she is taking the train to visit her father she is captured by the security force of this world and she thinks that she's going to be sentenced to death because as far as anybody is aware that is the sentence for being clairvoyant but she is actually taken somewhere else and and the plot expands a lot from there. I don't like to say anymore because that aspect of the plot took me by surprise but that is kind of the gist of this one. While we're on the theme of books that I've bought I will move on to the books that I bought new over the last few months. The first two I have are a couple of my most anticipated releases of 2019. The first one being Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Now I have actually started this although I haven't picked it up in like a month because I just started reading other books. I was enjoying it. It wasn't that I didn't like it. I just got distracted but this follows a girl called Alex Stern who has had a bit of a rough past but something lands her in hospital and she is visited by a man who offers her a full scholarship to Yale on the condition that she joins the ninth secret society which is called Leith 
as she can see ghosts. Now, the 48 pages that I read, we follow two characters. We follow Alex and we also follow Darlington. They are both in the ninth house and the responsibility of this house is to make sure that the other eight secret societies are behaving as all of the secret societies in this world that Lee Bardugo has written all dabble in different kinds of occult magic. So as I said, I was really enjoying this. I am hoping to pick it back up soon. It is on my Bacopoli TBR for November, but I don't think I'm going to get to it, sadly. So maybe next month. We'll see. We'll see. I have two weeks off in December, so I'm hoping to get a lot of reading done then. And the second one is possibly my most anticipated release of the year, but I didn't know that until like halfway through when I read the other books in this series. But that is The Toll by Neil Shusterman, which is the final book in the Ark of a Scythe trilogy. So the first book, Scythe, follows two apprentice scythes called Citra and Rowan, who live in a world where it is impossible to die. This is a utopian world. Humanity has conquered everything that there is no illness, there is no famine, everybody has everything that they need, there's enough food, there's enough work, and the only problem that humanity has is population control. Now this world is controlled by a big artificial intelligence called the Thunderhead to remedy this population control problem that they have. They have an organisation of scythes whose job it is to glean people. I read the first two books in the series earlier this year. I absolutely loved it. The first book in the series is 100% going to be in my best books of the year. I also got Gav into this series and he really loves it as well. And we've essentially both had a very busy November reading wise with the Believeathon, etc. So we are going to be buddy reading this in December. So 100% this will be done by the end of the year because we are both desperate to get to it. Speaking of Believeathon, the rest of the books I bought new this month were for Believeathon, which is a middle grade and children's literature readathon that has gone through the whole month of November, hosted by my friend Gav from Gavin Hetherington. I'll link him down below and any other booktubers I've mentioned in this video. But there were a couple of books I really wanted to read for Believeathon and I couldn't get them from my library and I didn't own them, so I did make a couple of purchases. The first one was Oz the Complete Collection Volume 1 by L. Frank Baum. I always call him Frank L. Baum and that's not correct. So as you guessed it, this is the book series that the movie The Wizard of Oz was based on. The Wizard of Oz is a movie that I grew up with. I don't remember the first time I watched it, but it's pretty much been present through my entire life. And The Wizard of Oz follows a young girl, Dorothy, who is swept up in a tornado and she ends up in the land of Oz, where her house accidentally lands on and kills the Wicked Witch of the East. The people of Oz rejoice because the Wicked Witch of the East is obviously wicked. So they give her the witch's magical slippers as a thank you, which causes her to be hunted by the Wicked Witch of the West, who wants these slippers for the immense power that they carry. There is a lot of pretty editions of The Wizard of Oz. This one is beautiful, but it is not the most beautiful edition. But this does contain the first three books in the Oz series, which are The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, The Marvelous Land of Oz, and Ozma of Oz. And I wanted to buy this in an edition where I could collect the rest of the books in the series as a matching set if I do wish to continue on with this series when I've read The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. I then picked up a box set of an entire series so I'm not going to go through the books individually but that was the complete Mary Poppins series by P.L. Travers which is comprised of Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins Comes Back, Mary Poppins Opens the Door, Mary Poppins in the Park and Mary Poppins in Cherry Tree Lane and The House Next Door. Now like with The Wizard of Oz, Mary Poppins is a film I have been familiar with all of my life and it was only when I watched Saving Mr. Banks, whatever year that was released, that I realised that the movie was based on a series of books. So naturally I wanted to read these for Believeathon. I have read Mary Poppins and I really enjoyed it. But if you are unfamiliar with this series, it follows a magical nanny called Mary Poppins who blows in on the wind to look after these four children who are in need of a nanny. The books are actually told as short stories. I'm not sure if all of them are, the first one definitely is, I would assume they're all the same. But each short story details an adventure that the children have with the magical, the wonderful Mary Poppins. And I absolutely love the first book and I'm really excited to continue with the rest of the series. Sorry if anything changed there guys, my memory card got full and I had to swap it out. But I don't know how much space is on this one either. So we'll carry on, we'll see what happens. We're now moving on to the stack of books that I was gifted. The first one, I'm not sure if it counts as gifted because my best friend Ryan bought me this when we went for a day out in Leeds but I did then buy him something from Lush that was almost 
equal in price so they kind of cancelled each other out but this is a graphic novel and it is Die Fantasy Heartbreaker. I don't think the names like the full names of all of the people who worked on this are on it but the first name is Kieran Gillen and this is a new graphic novel series. I think this is the only volume that's been published so far and this follows a group of teenagers who are playing a role-playing game in the 90s that's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons. When they get sucked into the game everyone thinks they've gone missing, they don't know what happened to them but 30 years later, so present day, they emerge out of the game but one of them is missing. The thing that drew me to this is the stunning cover. I don't know if this is a exclusive travelling man cover because the one on Goodreads is different but it is absolutely stunning and the art is not the usual art I go for in graphic novels because I normally go for things a little bit more colourful but it is a very, let me find a pretty page. I can't, they're all a bit grim but it is super detailed and it really caught my attention. I'm actually hoping I can get around to reading this soon because with it being a graphic novel, it will be a short read. And as I haven't heard anybody talk about this yet, it would be something that I would like to read so I can let you guys know whether I recommend it or not. The wonderful Gavin, of course, gifted me something. He's made it his ambition to get into every single one of my book hauls at least once. Last month, he gifted me Frostheart by Jamie Littler, which is currently his favorite children's book. This is also the group book for Believeathon, so I have read this one and this follows a young boy called Ash who lives in this snowy world. I think that this is a dystopian world although it's never explicitly said but Ash lives in a world where everybody is scared of song. They all live in these settlements that are kind of built up on mountains or built out of the snow and there are monsters called leviathans that live in the snow. Now the leviathans communicate via song so the people of this world believe that anybody else who sings is going to communicate with the monsters, become brave washed and start working for them. Now Ash does have this unique singing ability and he is something called a song weaver and one day he accidentally sings and people find out that he's a song weaver so he ends up exiled from his community which leads him to board the Frost Heart which is a sleigh or kind of like a ship that is full of people called Pathfinders whose job it is to travel across the land and while on there he does end up on a quest to find his missing parents who disappeared when he was very young. This also has beautiful illustrations, Let's see if I can find one, which I found really added an extra dimension to the story. This isn't my favourite children's book ever, but I think that if you do like children's books, then you will very much enjoy this. The next book I have literally just received, and this was a gift from my boyfriend, because today is actually our four year anniversary, and he gifted me the A Court of Thorns and Roses Collector's Edition by Sarah J Maas. He generally always gifts me a Sarah J Maas book, because her release schedule tends to be May and November, and my birthday is in May, and our anniversary is in November. So this is of course the collector's edition. It's got some pretty foiling on. It comes in a slip case with a ribbon so you can pull the book out. And then this is the front cover and the back cover. And then as for it being the collector's edition, the things that are kind of different about it is that it has these on the chapter headers and also around the edges of the pages. And the thing that I love the most about the collector's editions is that they've redone the map. And I love me a map in a fantasy book. So that is the newest map of Prithian. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I know a lot of people only like the second book in the series. I like all of them. So essentially anything Sarah J Maas, I will add to my collection and I will cherish this for many years to come. Kind of not really a book but I do use it for my channel sort of so I will show it here but Curtis also gifted me my 2020 happy planner. I like planning, I put my video schedule in here, I do have the vertical planners I think or are they the horizontal ones? I always forget, does it say on the thing? Vertical, they're the vertical planners and I use one column for life stuff, bills and things like that, one column for YouTube and one column for candle stuff. So I find these really useful. I absolutely love planning. I haven't been doing it for a while. I need to get back into it. But like I said, this isn't really relevant, but it is a book, so 
I thought I'd show you. The lovely Steph from the channel Steph Loves has gifted me two books recently. The first one is Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. I think she said this is the fairy loot edition and she had it and had read it and saw it on my wish list so she sent it my way so thank you so much Steph. I love East Asian inspired fantasy so this is one of the 2019 releases that I was keeping my eye on to see whether the reviews were good and I think a lot of them have been. I don't know too much about this but I think it follows Korean mythology and it follows a character who is a gummyo. I hope I pronounce that right and she eats the hearts of boys is it boys yeah consuming the energy of men but she has a talisman that allows her to do this and her talisman has gone missing so she has to find it before the next time that she needs to feed so that she can survive. Steph also gifted me the Six of Crows collector's edition. It has a poster in because I went to the Lee Bardugo signing in October, but I bought the Crookie Kingdom collector's edition for myself because I was planning on reading it. I'm going to be reading it this month. However, I did not have the Six of Crows one, so Steph gifted it to me because she said that I can't have an incomplete set. Once again, thank you, Steph. And you guys probably know what this is about. This is a booktube darling, but this follows six kind of criminals and outcasts that are led by Kaz Brecker and they have been tasked with performing an impossible heist to release a man who has created this very dangerous and very addictive drug from one of the most secure prisons in the world. I also took it and got it signed although you can't really see the signature because she signed this <laughs> decorative page. I was also gifted another East Asian fantasy. This one was gifted to me by Tracy, so thank you Tracy. And this one is Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This one I think is Project Runway meets Moolah. I think this follows a seamstress whose father is summoned to the royal court and she dresses as a boy to go in his place. I don't know why, I don't know why she has to go or her father is summoned, but it definitely sounds interesting and I hope I like it. With this being about a seamstress, it's a little bit, I wanna say girlier? I don't really wanna say girlier, but the project runway aspect of this is not something that I normally read or I'm familiar with. I'm very interested to see how this has been mixed into an East Asian inspired fantasy, and I generally love East Asian inspired fantasy, so I'm sure I'll enjoy it anyway. The next two books were gifted to me by the lovely Bev. The first one she gifted to me as a congratulations for hitting 10K on Booktube, and that is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. Like with Paul Tremblay, Grady Hendrix is another horror author that I have been interested in. I'm interested in Grady Hendrix because his stories seem unique and the way that he formats them are very unique. This one is essentially an Ikea catalogue. It even has a order form near the front. But this takes place in a store called Orsk, which is very much like Ikea. This store is haunted and a few of the staff members do stay and work an overnight shift to try and get to the bottom of the hauntings. Very excited to read this because I want to know what I think of Grady Hendrix. I also have My Best Friend's Exorcism by him, which I'm dying to read. I do think I will love these books. I tend to really like interestingly formatted books, but I do know that Grady Hendrix's brand of horror is kind of comedy horror, which is not something I generally like in movies. I can't say for books because I haven't read a lot of horror at all, but I am hoping that I will enjoy this. And as a housewarming present, Bev also gifted me Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. This, of course, like with Mary Poppins and like with The Wizard of Oz, this was adapted into several movies. There's several Peter Pan movies and several retellings of this story. Not gonna go too much into what this is about because it's a, a classic story, but this follows Peter Pan well, actually, I don't know whose perspective it follows. It might follow Wendy. It is essentially the story of Peter Pan, who is a boy who never grows up. He is in charge of the Lost Boys, but he sweeps through the window of Wendy Darling, and I don't know what her brother's called. It doesn't mention the name of any of the other children, apart from Wendy, but he takes them to Neverland for a grand adventure. This is also part of the classics editions that are the Penguin English Library Collection, which I am collecting, so I'm really glad to have this to add to my collection because I think I will enjoy it. Also in the Penguin English Library collection, we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This one was gifted to me by Lisa, so thank you very much, Lisa. I have read this one before. I read it when I was 15, but I recently had to read The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White as a bookopoly punishment. And I did not like that book, but I said many times when I was reviewing that book that I wished that Frankenstein was more fresh in my mind when I was reading it. So I added this to my Amazon 
Amazon wishlist because I do want to reread it. I did enjoy it when I read it in school. But this book follows Victor Frankenstein and the monster that he creates. And then the last book that was gifted to me was The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is the second book from the author of The Night Circus. I think she's only written The Night Circus before this. This was gifted to me by Elizabeth. So thank you very much, Elizabeth. This book has only just been released and I can't believe I already have it in my hands. Also worth noting is the edges on this. I believe that these are clues that relate to the plot. The plot of this, I've heard people who are currently reading it try and explain it and struggle, but the very basic plot of this is that we follow a man or a boy, I don't know how old he is. It doesn't say, but he is in a library and he stumbles across a book that he starts to read and the story in the book mirrors the story of his life and it's a book within a book. I expect the prose to be really flowery, Hopefully not quite as fake as The Night Circus, but I'm really intrigued to see what I think about this one. And I also haven't heard any reviews of this yet, I think because it has just been released, but I'm excited to see in people's November wrap-ups what they think about this. And then the last stack of books that I have to talk to you guys about, this has been a really long video, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, is the books that I've received in subscription boxes of the last couple of months. So we'll start off with Illumicrate, because I've only received one from them recently, and that is Angel Mage by Garth Nix. Now I don't know anything about the plot of this or the plot of a lot of these because they're not books that I've chosen for myself, they've been sent to me, but this is by the author of the Old Kingdom series, is it called? Yeah, the Sabriel series and I want to read Sabriel now. I saw Kaz from the little book I will review it at least a year ago now and I always thought it was a children's book but it is young adult so I'm much more interested in it now than I was. I believe that this is Garth Nix's first adult book and it does contain angels which is not something that I'm normally interested in but I remember when I read the dust jacket in my unboxing video that it actually sounded really interesting. The first line says Lilith is determined to find Polenial her lost lover the archangel of Estara but it sounds like a very complex and intricate adult fantasy plot with angels which I I haven't read any adult or young adult fantasy, like young adult high fantasy that contains angels. So that's something that I'm very intrigued about. Now for the Owl Crate books, I have four of these out of two boxes. The last two boxes I've received from Owl Crate have had two books each, which is crazy. So I'll start with the October Owl Crate books, just for a little bit of chronology in here. And the first one of those is one of the books I spilled coffee on, which is really annoying, but that is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. This is is a young adult fantasy and this follows grave diggers but in a world where bones come to life so I think they're kind of like zombies but they're more like skeletons and our main character is a grave digger I don't know this is the thing with this book I don't understand why you would be a grave digger if bodies are coming to life but I think that the they're called bone houses like the reanimated corpses and I think that they're getting more vicious and ferocious in their attempts to attack people which is causing people concern. Also in the October box, we got a Penguin classic horror, and that was The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Don't know too much about this because I still haven't watched the Netflix show, even though I know that the show is very different from the book. But I think that this is a classic haunted house story. And surprisingly, a lot of people were reading this last year so that they could watch the show, which I mean, classics are normally polarizing and a lot of people don't like them. But all of the reviews that I've seen for The Haunting of Hill House is is positive so I'm very intrigued to read this one and then the last two books of this ridiculously large book haul when I get home from shopping I'm gonna have to edit this tomorrow and I already regret everything because it's currently 2 a.m. It's been an hour we've been here guys oh wait no sorry let me just backtrack a second these were in the September Owl Crate not the October one because in the October Owl Crate we got cryos ah, I just paper cut myself ow <sighs> In the October Owl Crate, we got Cryer's War by Nina Varela. Once again, subscription box book, brand new release, don't know too much about this, but it did give me slight Lunar Chronicles vibes and also slight The Kingdom vibes by Jess Rothenberg. But I think this is set in a world with androids and humans and the humans used to rule and have the androids as their servants. But a while ago, there was a war and they kind of switched places. So now androids are in power and the humans are their servants. And I think 
think that this book contains a female female romance between a human servant and an android so i'm very excited about this i really enjoy sci-fi and female female romance also this cover you can't really see it too much because of the glare but it is really pretty and then the second book in the october i'll create was i hope you get this message by farah naz rishi and this is a more contemporary science fiction so it follows contemporary themes but there is a science fiction plot line going on in here so this follows a group of teenagers who have just found out that the world is going to end it's kind of like oh it kind of seems like the breakfast club like each of the teenagers is from a different background or has different interests but they come together because they need to get their affairs in order and decide what they're going to do because the world is going to end and they only have a very short amount of time to live the rest of their lives essentially very intrigued about this i do have a book that is or seems similar to this i haven't read it yet it's down here actually and that is we all looked up by tommy wallach and the plots of both of these also kind of remind me of one of my favorite movies which is seeking a friend for the end of the world which has Kieran knightley and steve carell in it would highly recommend that movie if you haven't seen it i love it so i'm very interested in this don't know when i'll get to it because it's more contemporary based but i think it will be the kind of young adult contemporary i like because as i said earlier in the video young adult contemporary isn't my thing those are the 31 books i acquired in the last two and a bit months it was a lot this video is long i hope you enjoyed it i hope you maybe learned about some books that you hadn't heard of before i don't know i mean i like watching hauls but i can't tell you why so i don't know why you guys like watching them either but as i said it is now 2 a.m so it's time to wrap up this video please let me know if you have read any of these books especially the ones that i know very little about like dragonflight by Anne mccaffrey or let me know if you've read any of these subscription box books because those are obviously new releases and not a lot of people have read them yet please also don't forget that you can check out imposia blanket the link to the website and also both of my discount codes will be in the description box for you to check out as i said highly recommend this is a product that was sent to me for free but it is also a product that i'm now going to go out and spend my money on which says a lot these are so so good and of course as usual please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to if you head to my description box you'll find a link to my goodreads instagram and twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish body butter and candle website the instagram for that and a 10 percent off discount code but that's it from me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no